welcome to Craft Little Things, my name is Andrea and um, recently I did a little video on um, how starting up a YouTube channel or something uh, and it was quite popular, I did it in this sort of drawing style and um, I said that I would do one on making a craft tutorial video as well because I think they're quite, you know, it's different one thing having a craft channel and it's another thing having making the actual video itself um, so this is just absolutely off the top of my head um, so I'm going to run through a few things um, and hopefully it will help you to understand and also it will help you to understand what what it's like to make a craft video for those people who are sort of quite critical as well. So the first thing that you need to be thinking of really I think is your environment. So where are you going to film? And one of the things you need to think about in that is what space do you have? You know, what room are you going to use? Is there a lot of noise around? Have you got construction going on outside? What's the lighting like? Because all of these things can... That's a little light bulb. All of these things can impact on the success of your video um, or the, the not <laughs> success of your video and I have problems with all of these things um, first of all you know your space I mean I don't have a problem with the space to record in that's no problem for me whatsoever I've got plenty of space I've got a nice table and everything I've got lots of room um, and I and I do it from my craft room um, noise is an issue you can have outside noise um, so think about what time you're going to film um, because that might make a difference as to um, what kind of noises are going on. Um, for me, one of my biggest problems with noise isn't noise from the outside. Um, it's noise from the inside. <laughs> um, I have little puppies um, who make a lot of noise and like to let themselves be known. And it's um, a little bit annoying sometimes. <laughs> um, fortunately, my baby, absolute baby puppies, they're going to, they've all gone to new homes now, except one, the most noisy. Um, but I've just had to put up with it sometimes. Some You know that it's annoying for people to watch, but if you don't just put up with it, you, you're never going to film anything. And so sometimes you just have to make the best of a bad job. Lighting is important. Daylight, like this light now is wonderful. It's daylight, it's lovely, but the sun is just creeping around. And when that creeps around, it's going to cast all kinds of shadows all over my work and get on my nerves and get in my eyes and everything else. So think about blinds. If you're going to film at night, think about reflection and glare. Think about the cost of having massive lights go in. Um, so that's one thing I just wanted to talk about. That brings me on to equipment, which is the second kind of category. So what tools do you need? Um, first thing you need to think about is what are you actually going to film on? Are you going to film on your phone or are you going to use a camera? Um for filming, I, I mean, I use a cheap, it was about £100, um, digital video camera that's permanently attached to my tripod, which brings me to the next thing. Tripods, are you going to have an overhead tripod, the one that sort of dangles down like this, which is what I use, and then a little screen on the side of my video. Or are you going to have one of these bendy arms that just clamps onto a shelf and holds onto your phone? which is quite, they're quite useful, they don't take up as much space, but do you have a shelf to attach it to, or a, a table? So what are you going to actually use to film your video on? Do you get a good clear image? Think about that. And do you get good sound quality? Because there's nothing worse than trying to watch a video and listen to somebody and you, you just can't hear what they're saying because the sound quality is so poor. Um, if you have poor sound quality, um, then one of the things you can do is you can edit your video later. I'm going to talk about editing in a minute. Um, so that you're editing out, so you should, maybe you're captioning instead of speaking. 
uh, which might help you. OK, also be, uh, be aware of in the environment um, section about music playing in the background because YouTube can pick up what that music is and copyright your video. The next thing is preparation. So once you've got your equipment sorted and your space, um, you need to be prepared. So have everything you need to hand. So all your materials to hand, your scissors, Oops. Your scissors, your your dies, your stamp sets, your blocks, your inks, everything. So that you're not running around looking for things during your filming like I am. <laughs> now sometimes I do a lot of videos where um I just make it up as I go along and you can't help it. And sometimes a lot of people do say they like that kind of video because it helps them to think, oh, yeah, I could probably start off like that and then see where it takes me. So sometimes you do need to just grab something. Well, pause your camera if you're doing that instead of shouting from the other side of the room saying what you're doing or leaving the bit in where you're imaging, uh, leaving the bit in where you're rummaging around but all people can see is your desktop so remember just to click that pause button just to give um yourself a little less stuff to edit out and a stuff less stuff for people to complain about really um but do try to be prepared and try to have everything you're going to need to hand because it will help you a lot now one of the next things you need to think about is the style of your video what kind of video are you going to make? Are you going to make one where you narrate your video? So it's there's a lot of um, sort of like a chatty talking video. Are you going to do captioning? Are you going to do some like... Um, so just say may, maybe you have captioning and music and no voice at all. Are you going to do a detailed tutorial? So why are you going to show every little single part of the process? So that's really good for if you're aiming them at beginners. Or are you going to do a sort of um, a, a speeded up kind of tutorial where you speed through the obvious parts? You know, you don't need to tell somebody, I'm gluing this to this now. You can speed through those parts. Um, what kind of style are you going for? Now, it's, it's hard to give advice on that because so many people have different tastes and your audience will all be different as well so some people will like videos where you talk a lot some people will like videos where it's just music and words and they don't hear you at all some people um, like to see really fast sort of edited down videos and some people like a, a drawn out long video so you know even when you're even when you're doing whole videos of your crafting materials and buys um some people like you to open everything and say how much it was and go through every single thing that you've got like every sheet of dsp some people just like the quick flick through so think about your style think about what you're going to do and i would suggest mix it up because you're never going to appeal to everybody with just one style one style will help you to um be better organised and to plan better and to be more like production line with it but um, your audience will probably prefer a little bit of this and a little bit of that um, the next thing is to think about editing so first of all think about the time factor with editing um, it can take ages to edit a video if you've if you've recorded an hour of footage and you need to cut out the dog barking like this is me cut out the dog barking cut out yourself waffling cut out where you go walking around looking for a, a stamp that you've forgotten to get out or you answer the door or one of your children comes in and starts singing and talking to you and you have a full conversation and you forget to pause the video Sometimes editing out, um, I, I can get an hour long of footage and I can edit it down to nine minutes. Um, and so editing out that, that other 51 minutes takes a lot of time. Um, and sometimes I, I, don't, I can't do it. I can't edit out the dog every time because I might be doing something important and I'm not going to go back and redo everything 
just because the dog barked. Um, but sometimes, you know, I do try to edit edit things out. So you're going to need, um, and some people say, oh, I don't edit my videos. What you see is what you get. That's all well and good if you're super organised and you don't have people um, interrupting you and you've not got family living in the house with you and who are unpredictable as well it's when you've got small kids you know oh they're going to go to bed at x time so i can relax and, and do my videos tonight when they're asleep when you've got teenagers it's not so easy especially when you've got older teenagers who don't even have a school timetable or their college timetable doesn't mix with yours or their university doesn't doesn't meet with yours so they're just going to come in when they feel like it um, that can be really difficult to edit around, to, to work around. So you need to edit some of that out. Um, and, you know, some people are super organised and they don't need to edit at all because everything just goes pop, pop, pop to plan. Sometimes I do videos like that and sometimes I don't. The other thing you need to think about with editing is software. What software are you going to use? Now, there's some really expensive software out there. I just use Movie Maker, which comes free with Windows. And then I think iMovie comes free with um, with most Apple um, laptops and computers and stuff. Um, and if you um, video using your phone, I suppose there's the similar versions on your phone. I don't use my phone. Um, obviously, if you're if you're going live on Facebook Live or on YouTube Live, then you don't need to edit at all. Next thing to think about is music. Now, this can be a problem because sometimes people don't like music. Sometimes they do. Sometimes some people have an intro. And an outro music, that's what I tend to do. Some people have incidental music during the um, demonstration that might be playing quietly all the way through. Some people have music when there's long pieces that they're folded up. That's what I do, just to stop it being too boring. Um, so you might want to put music into your video. Um, be careful... If you have a radio playing in the background or any music playing in the background because it may be picked up by YouTube, especially if you put it on YouTube, and your video um, will be seen to be contravening copyright if you haven't got permission to use that song. Uh, the other thing about copyright is that uh, you have to have permission to use music on your YouTube videos. Um, there are free um, copyright and royalty free music sites. One I use is called is www.bensound.com and they have fabulous free music and sounds that you can use. All you have to do is um, acknowledge them in your description or on your video. Um, so that they know, so that people know to go there and, and get theirs. So like a bit of a promotion for them, which is only fair and they are royalty free. Now, what happens is if your YouTube, if you're making money out of your YouTube channel. So if you're, um, if you have paid adverts on there, then, um, and you've got a piece of music that infringes copyright, what they'll usually do is they'll take any revenue from that video um and so you'd lose revenue from that video it would it wouldn't become monetized for you um so um be careful with that and also think about music um you know what type of music your audience is likely to to not find offensive or harmful on the ears the next thing to think about is sharing so where are you going to share your video most obvious place is on youtube and to have a youtube channel and youtube is connected to your google account um, so things kind of run quite smoothly from your google to your youtube you can have um you can also 
share videos now on Facebook and you can also share them on Instagram which would be short videos. Facebook you can put longer videos on there and you can do live videos of course on these two so you can broadcast live to your audience but also you can share your videos on your blog direct people to your video from your blog or you can embed your video in your blog you can share your video on Facebook so you can let people know it exists on Facebook Instagram's a bit tricky because you can't put web links um, like um, URLs on, on Instagram but you can post a picture of what you've made and say the video is available. You can put the link to your YouTube in your bio on Instagram. You can also share them on Pinterest. Um, and you to share them on Google+. Plus. Um, so put, you put word out there on Twitter. YouTube used to automatically send out a tweet. You could set it up to automatically send out a tweet. It doesn't anymore. It stopped doing that, I think, at the end of last month. Um, but you can still link a video on Twitter so yeah so think about sharing your video so people know it's out there as well as just sharing it with your subscribers who obviously see it and the people who have clicked the bell button will get notifications that your video is up so um, encourage people to do that um, the next thing is if you're going to, if you are going to have an intro and an outro, um, your sort of what they call the the end slide. Are you going to have an end slide and an intro slide? So are you going to have the same ending and beginning every time? You're going to have something. You'll see some people create little movies um, to put at the beginning and the end. Uh, some people have little sayings that they always use, things like that. In your end slide, it's always good to credit anybody you need to credit. So credit the music, for instance. Okay. And don't forget to put links. If you said you're going to leave, I'm always doing this. I say I'm going to leave a link in the description and I forget to put the link in the description. So if, you, if you're going to leave links and stuff in the description, make sure you use that description box to leave those links. The final thing I want to talk about is feedback. So, whatever your video is, if now you have to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand rolling um, view hours to be able to monetize your video. Now, monetizing your video means that, um, in fact, before we talk about feedback, let me talk about monetization. So. monetization now this is when you get um, adverts on your videos so you allow YouTube to put adverts on your videos and you decide where they you, you can decide to some extent where they go how long they last and, and whatever um, but every time uh, those videos appear every time somebody sees those videos you'll get a, a small amount of revenue um, if people click on them I think your revenue increases um, if people watch a whole of an advert, I think your revenue increases rather than skipping the advert, things like that. Now, um, some people are against adverts. They don't like adverts interrupting their viewing. But a lot of YouTubers, they put a lot of time and effort into... Um, they put a lot of time and effort into making their videos. And there can be a lot of expense involved as well. You know, once you've bought all that equipment we talked about... If you've bought some nice software, um, if you're having to, um, you know, because you've to find time to make your videos, you're having to be in a, in a certain place. And some people might even rent a space so they can film better. Sun's coming through, look, the shadows are appearing. Um, so they, they don't, they, they want a little bit of something back and it's not a lot. Um, so they might monetize the videos. Now you can't monetize your videos, like I said, until you've got a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours and then you can sign up to the partner program um and you have to 
meet certain criteria to be eligible for the partner programme. And you can link that to Google AdSense. So if you've got videos on your blog, um, adverts on your blog or on your website, that will all sort of join together and anything that you earn will all come together. Um, I think you have to earn £60, I think it is, before they, they'll send you the money. And of course, that has to be accounted for in tax for tax purposes. Um, now, some people, like I say, they don't, they don't like videos with adverts and they complain about them. But, I mean, you know, people are doing this for free. People are putting out their work and their expertise and they're spending their time to do that. And they're doing it for nothing. They're not charging. Even if you went to a class, you'd pay a fiver or something. Well, believe me, most craft YouTubers are not making a fiver for every video they put out there. So, um, you know, a little bit of something um, is useful, comes in handy. So I'll go back now to the feedback. Now, you'll get people who just complain about everything in life. And you'll get people who complain about nothing in life. And there's a thumbs up and a thumbs down. And, <clears throat> you know, you can't please everybody all of the time. What really upsets me is when I see people who have had hundreds or tens even of positive comments. Um, so people have said nice things about their work um, and, you know, they've complimented them. And then there'll be one... So there'll be hundreds of positive comments and then there'll be one negative comment. And what they do is they respond to this one. They ignore all of these and they respond to that one because that one upsets them. That one's bothered them that someone hasn't liked what they did. And we're all human beings. You know, we want people to like what we do and enjoy what we do. Um, but, you know, it upsets me when people do that. Because I think all of these positive comments have been ignored. And, and I see this a lot with some big YouTubers. All of these positive comments have been ignored. And this one negative one has been responded to. And that what that's done, that's shone a light on that person. And that's what they want. <laughs> they want some attention quite often. Especially trolls who just say nasty things for the sake of it. But there will be people who give their honest opinions. And... You're putting things out there for people to look at and, you know, people give their honest opinion. I respect that. I'm, I'm always respectful of people giving their honest opinion. If people say, oh, I couldn't see it properly because you kept falling off the screen, which I do all the time, fair dues. I have. I'm, I apologise that I'm trying to improve. You know, respond to that. If you respond, to, I respond to every single comment. So I respond to the good ones and the negative ones. Fortunately, I don't have, I haven't had many negative ones, but I have had a couple of whinging, you know, posts, uh, comments saying, "Oh, I'm not watching you anymore because I can't see this," or "I'm not watching you um, because of that." I'm like, well, "Okay, thanks for your time," and you know, off you go. <laughs> it's you know, you can't please everyone all, all of the time, um, and some people, like I say, like a different style. Well, there's lots of us out there. So if you like a different style, I'm sure there's somebody who, you know, will keep you happy if you go and find them. If it's not me, then that's no great loss to either of us, is it? So just be real about them um, and be rational. You know, just don't get upset about it because it's not worth getting upset about. If somebody, you know, doesn't like what you're doing... There's not a lot you can do about it. Um, they're there. They've come. They've shown an interest. Um, and just be grateful for that. You were doing something right to get them to that point. But then if they didn't like it, maybe they didn't like it. It wasn't for them. Um, they'd, instead of just going off and not saying anything, they've had to leave a bit of a comment. And maybe that comment will help you to improve. Maybe it won't. But um, just be ready for feedback. And... Um, you know, like I say, respond to your feedback. 
because um, it's always nice for people who leave messages. You know, they've gone out of their time to leave a message saying, I really enjoyed this, it was fun, or, you know, thank you for this, it helped me make a decision or something. Then um, it's nice to just get back to them and, and just thank them, just say thank you for leaving the comment, it's really kind of you. Um, and your thumbs up and thumbs down. I would ignore those. I mean, <laughs> come on. I had uh, one day, it was the day my anniversary of my dad's death, um, and I had 40 videos, thumb, thumb, thumbs down, in, you know, the space of a few minutes. And I thought to myself, at first I thought, what kind of horrible, you know, miscreant goes and just sits and thumbs down everyone's video they've not that someone's videos they've not they've obviously not watched them because the thumbs downs all happened in such a short amount of time they'd obviously just clicked thumbs down thumbs down thumbs down so it's somebody who had something against me for whatever reason um and who didn't feel they could come and say to me i've got a problem with you um or you know which i would have much preferred um because I think, well, they're not going to get any resolution, are they, by just thumbs down in all my videos? I mean, that's not going to make them feel better, surely, because surely it would be better to sort of talk to me. <laughs> that would make... I don't know. I just didn't understand it. But then I went from that to thinking, do you know what? Somebody's taken all that time. <laughs> Some, somebody's taken all that time to sit and give me all those thumbs down. And I thought, wow, I must be really important to that person. You know, I must be I must be important to them, whoever they are, um, for them to have taken that time and spent that energy um sitting because I won't I couldn't be bothered to sit there and I, I ain't got the time and I don't dislike or like anyone enough to sit and just go through 40 videos disliking them. So I thought, wow, I must be really important to them and you know, I've obviously done something to upset them, and it would. And again, I thought it would have been much nicer if they'd have just told me, because I would have liked to have um, put things right. But they wanted to sit and dislike forty videos. I mean, they were probably planning on working through all of them, but I'm quite a prolific poster, so um, they probably got fed up. They might come back and do it at some other time. But thumbs down, it doesn't mean they don't like what you've done. Thumbs down and can just be somebody who's miserable. <laughs> somebody who's just... I'm sorry, but I'm sorry to laugh because some people are just miserable. They just they just are. And, you know, let them crack on. Um, but, and some people genuinely didn't like your video. And they might not like it because they couldn't follow it or they don't like you or they don't like the way that sound or they don't like the sun glaring and the shadows or they couldn't see properly or they couldn't hear properly or they got sick of your dog barking or, you know, they got sick of you waffling or whatever. I mean, this will probably get loads of thumbs down because my drawings aren't very good and because I'm waffling like crazy. But um, I don't care. <laughs> don't care about the thumbs down because, you know, they came to you in the first place, which means you're doing something right you know if you open a shop and nobody came into the door through the door you'd be really really disappointed if a hundred people came through the door and none of them bought anything you'd be disappointed but not as disappointed as if nobody came through the door and if one person came through the door and didn't buy something and one person came through the door and did buy something you'd be really happy so you know, just gain some perspective on it and just, 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 you know, consider the person behind the action. And sometimes they're probably not a very happy person. And sometimes they are a happy person, but they're just, they're trying to give you a little bit of advice and some pointers and some feedback. Okay. So, um, yeah. And if you do want, um, really critical feedback, then ask somebody, a good friend or somebody in the crafting community just say to them look what do you honestly think of my videos how could I improve them um especially ask somebody whose videos maybe you admire um you know there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from each other that's what we're all about um so yeah I hope that was useful to you 
we'll just go through, just um, quickly reiterate. So I've done the feedback one. So I said the first one was thinking about your environment, getting your space, thinking about minimising noise, sorting out your lighting. Then we went on to equipment. Uh, you don't need to spend a fortune on equipment, believe me. Most most craft videos, um, craft uh, YouTubers I know, you use their phones. Be prepared, make sure you've got everything ready. Um, don't get things in the wrong order. What's your style going to be? Are you going to be chatty? Are you going to mix it up? Are you going to be really detailed? Are you going to speed things up? Think about your editing. Think about the time spent for editing. Think about the software you're going to use. Um, think about whether you want to edit at all. Think about your music. Make sure that you've got permission to use it. Make sure that it's appropriate. And um, think about freebies. Where you're going to share your videos. Think about that. To make sure that you get it out there. Because the channel, it can be very slow to grow a channel. Um, looking at my analytics, um, I've only got a very small channel. Um, but only, I think, it, I think it's something like 4% of my regular viewers are subscribers. So most people who come and look at my videos aren't even subscribed. Um, and they come back time and again. So, you know, think about where you share and try and encourage people who do come back to subscribe to give you a better understanding of who's actually watching. Um, think about your intro and outro, so your end slides, and then think about monetization. You're not going to make a fortune out of YouTube. One, one way some people do make money out of YouTube is through sponsorships. So people will um, pay them to advertise something basically on their channel. So they might say, oh, um, we'll give you X amount of money if you, during this video, you talk about your holiday to centre parks or something. <laughs> if it's centre parks, <laughs> one would be doing that. Um, or they might say, can you make a video entirely about centre parks and we'll pay you for that. Um, but you know the, in the crafting world they might give you some wool they might give you some product or something and say could you promote this you can have the product free if you do do that you have to declare that so you have to make that clear to people that you're I mean if I was to sit here going on about how amazing sharpies are for instance and keeping that sharpie in view of the camera all the time and saying oh my sharpie oh i'll get a different colored sharpie oh but then um if that's because i like it and i've bought it and i genuinely which i do <laughs> um and use sharpies all the time when i'm teaching uh flip chart markers they're great um <laughs> by the way um but if they'd given me this and said can you use this in your video and we'll pay you um or if you use this in your video we'll give you a year's supply of sharpies then i'd have to declare that by letting people know in the description or in the video that um it was an advert or it was a sponsored video so that's how people tend to make more money not from their viewers like unless you've got millions and millions of viewers then you know and i mean it depends what you call a lot of money i mean if you want to make a couple of quid to spend on crafting stuff or to put away for a holiday spend or something then you might be able to do that okay so any questions you have put up in the comments below anything you think that i've not said correctly put in the comments below and like i said i always respond and i'm sorry this sun's come through now i'm going to have to address my lighting issues before i carry on for the day okay take care see you soon